Sarah Buffer from Gigum TV Green Overdrive Show, and we're in front of Pinnacle Engines, super efficient engine. And right now, they're testing the crap out of it and getting all the data and proving how efficient it is. We're here in the labs and offices of Pinnacle Engines, and I'm here with Ron Hoog, CEO of Pinnacle Engines. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Great. And here for our show, we haven't done that much with the traditional internal combustion engine, um, but you guys are making a much more efficient engine. So tell me about that. Yes, we've concentrated in a different part of clean technology. A lot of, a lot of uh, new technology around vehicles has been uh, the area of electrification, hybrids, uh, and other forms of uh, transportation that are not using fossil fuels. Our focus has been the internal combustion engine is 100 years old. It has certain features that have worked well, others that are inefficient. There is a better way to make an internal combustion engine that can be game changing in terms of fuel efficiency, emission reduction, and low cost. And we have developed such a technology. And you were saying two thirds of the, en the energy that goes into an engine, in a traditional engine, is lost a lot of times. So this, more than that. More probably, than two thirds. Probably, historically, maybe three quarters of the fuel energy that goes into that chamber is dissipated either through heat losses traditionally in uh, metal, as the metal gets hot and they burn hot and then it dissipates, or through the exhaust system itself. It's based upon the fact that no matter how successful the other forms of transportation, electrification and like will be, something like 70-75% uh, of the uh, power required for transportation 20 years from now will still be based upon an internal combustion engine. So a game-changing internal combustion engine can make a huge difference in terms of the world's use of fuel, in terms of emission controls and reduction of carb CO2. So what we what you typically have, um, this is just a generic uh, poppet valve engine, uh, these being the poppet valves. And so the inducted mixture comes in through here. So when this is open, the piston is moving down as our piston does, and this is the area that you have to breathe through. What we're able to do uh, with the sleeve valve is actually breathe through the full perimeter. And so instead of having a valve of this sort of size, um, for a similar displacement, it's a slightly larger, but for a similar displacement, we get to breathe through a much larger area. What that means is that we have greater freedom to manipulate the air as it comes in to have a higher turbulence level, which gives us a more stable combustion, um, which enables us to sort of drive the efficiency forward because of what we can do with that. So what we have here is half of the engine. It's an opposed piston engine. So it's a single cylinder, two pistons. Uh, so this is effectively mirrored across this plane here and you'd normally have another crank, another piston block. So this will be on the induction stroke. So as the piston starts to go down, the valve is already opening and the air and fuel get inducted through this full perimeter, um, which effectively is the intake port. So the air gets pulled in as the valve is open towards bottom dead center, we start closing the valve and then we start our compression cycle. So this half of the engine represents the intake half. It's then mirrored for the exhaust. So the exhaust, I'm going to rotate it backwards. Um, but after your combustion event, the exhaust will start to, uh, the exhaust piston starts to come up and push the spent gases out through an exhaust port. So who's going to buy it? Who do you want to sell it to? The world. <laughs> Everyone. Uh, everyone. But it has that level of applicability, but we're also practical. Therefore, we're starting in areas where we see great need, where there's pressure for change, and where there's speed to market. And that's taken us to Asia with this technology. We have our first customer partner in developing an engine for a vehicle to be on the roads in 2013 using our technology uh, for vehicle applications in Asia. In terms of cost, it seems like if you're targeting the Asian market, China, India, that it would have to be you know, a low cost vehicle or on par with what's being sold there now. You're right, and that's what makes this really a special technology. It is, as I said earlier, not, uh, it's simple and elegant in its design. 
and therefore it's low cost as well as highly efficient and very, very low on emissions. So we did an interesting study in uh, India, for example, take India with the average per capita income of $1,500 or so a year and the price of fuel at $6 a gallon, the impact for the average Indian in terms of the cost of fuel is the same as if fuel in this country were $21 a gallon. Okay. So if you had to pay $21 a gallon in this country, would you be conscious of what the fuel cost is and how you're using it? Absolutely. The average Indian is enormously conscious of this. As, as, as are people in China as well, Vietnam, other parts of Southeast Asia where incomes are low and fuel costs are high. You guys are kind of using the model, traditional technology model of the valley to try to remake the auto industry and, and specifically the traditional car. So like all these electric cars are coming out, but you guys are tackling the traditional internal combustion engine car. Yes, I think if you're going to make major inroads, as we said earlier, in, in terms of reducing uh, 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 fuel consumption and improving emissions across the vehicle transportation market, we should look at every a solution to that problem and not just the ones that are hybrid uh, you know uh, hybrid related or electrification related because there are many more challenges with electrification to get that product to marketplace to have the distribution systems in place etc so so why not concentrate on the today's fossil fuel internal combustion engines and make them considerably more efficient than they are today